Hey everybody, my name is Rick and today I'm gonna do my first original tag ever after a year and a half on BookTube. I'm gonna call it the 10 years, 10 books tag in which you have to go back from the last 10 years of your reading, so 2010 to 2019, and talk about your favorite book that you read each year through the decade. So it's 10 years, 10 books, here we go. So in 2010, my favorite book that I read that year was The Book of Lost Things by John Connolly. This is a story about a 12 year old boy who loses his mother and all he can do to cope is just isolate himself in his room and surround himself with the stories and books that he loves. But eventually these books kind of start to whisper to him and the line between fact and fiction, between reality and fantasy start to blur. This book is very much indebted to something like The Wizard of Oz or The Never Ending Story or stories about a child being taken into a world much larger and much scarier than what they're used to. It's about the loss of innocence. It's about love. It's about heartbreak. It's about how you can go through the worst thing you possibly could and find the strength to move forward. It's beautiful. In 2011, my favorite book was The Lover's Dictionary by David Levithan. This is without a doubt the most beautiful articulation of what it means to love a person that I've ever come across. Uh, if you're not um, familiar with The Lover's Dictionary, essentially the book goes through in kind of a dictionary format uh, with each page is a different word. Each of these words is about some kind of love, something relating to love or heartbreak or meeting someone or losing someone. Throughout the dictionary, as you read it, um, you start to piece together the character's specific love story and what um, happened or may have happened. It's, it's, yeah, it's one of the most beautiful books that I've ever read in my whole life, so much so that um, my wedding had kind of a night sky stars kind of theme to it. And for the stars that we put around the hall, I actually cut stars out of the pages of this book. It means that much to me. I just wanted it to be a part of that day for me. If you wanna know what it's like for someone else to fall in love and really feel it, read The Lover's Dictionary. In 2012, my favorite book was one of my favorite books of all time, Skippy Dies by Paul Murray. This is just this tragic comedy of epic proportions that takes place in an Irish boarding a school for boys. At the start of the book, a boy named Skippy dies within the first like five pages. And then the rest of the book, the next 600 pages are about how that happened and then what happens next. It's hilarious, it's heartfelt, it's about the joys and pains and sometimes beauty of what it's like to grow up as a teenager. It's about, as the book says, a world that is only more than happy to sacrifice its weakest members. It's about humor, it's about hopelessness, it's about life and death and M-theory and Robert Frost and weird science and teenage friendships of poetry and donuts and the mysteries of humanity. 2013 might go down as the best reading year of my life as I was going through the titles that I read that year. It was the hardest one to actually choose from I read Oryx and Crake that year, The Tragedy of Arthur, The Arenda, Ethan Frome. They're all in my top 10, 15 books of all time, but I have to choose what's probably my third favorite book ever, River of Stars by Guy Gabriel Kay. If you're a fan of Asian history, if you love fantasy and you love those two things mingling together, I would absolutely recommend this book. It is an epic about prideful, emperors battling courtiers, bandits and soldiers. There are nomadic invasions, a young woman who's a songwriter and a calligrapher doing battle in her own way. One of my favorite female protagonists in all of literature. This is a world that's inspired by the uh, brilliant, decadent Song dynasty in China. It's about beauty and grace amidst just savage politics. And it's just, it's one of the best books ever. I absolutely love it. Now, after one of the best reading years of my life in 2013, it turns out 2014 was one of the worst because I had a really hard time um, finding the book that I was going to pick for this because I had a lot of mediocre reads that year, apparently, like according to Goodreads anyway. Uh, but I settled on this one, which I'm pretty happy with. Euphoria by Lily King. I love this book. This is based on a true story of a female anthropologist who went to New Guinea with her husband to study the South Pacific tribes there. And it's there that they meet a man named Andrew Bankson who becomes enthralled with this couple and their lives just start to intertwine um, in really beautiful, chaotic, dangerous ways that really starts to threaten 
their, their careers, their love lives, and even their actual lives. This is a book about love and fierce jealousy that just starts to burn out of control. And it's just, it's an extremely literary book. Lily King is wonderful. And uh, yeah, I would recommend this book very highly. Now in 2014, I was a guest on the Right Reads podcast. And together we read one of my top five favorite novels of all time. That is All My Puny Sorrows by Miriam Taves. I just loved reading this with Kurt and Tanya on that podcast because it, forced me to delve deeper into this book than I probably normally would have. And uh, it ended up being one of the most special, not only reading experiences of my life, but just one of the most special experiences of my life. I just love this book so much. This book is very much about siblings, about sisterhood, about family, and more than anything about uh, assisted suicide. One of the characters in this book uh, is extremely wealthy, successful, beautiful, talented and all she wants more than anything in the world is to kill herself. She is just so wildly unhappy regardless of how much success has come her way and she asks her sister to come to Switzerland with her to help her undergo assisted suicide. But it's such a beautiful novel about mental health and what we owe the people that we love and what it means to love the people that we love. In 2016 my favorite novel was Black Swan Green by David Mitchell. It's probably my favorite coming of age novel that I've ever read. The book tracks a single year in the life of Jason Taylor, who is a 13 year old boy living in England in 1982. This is very much just what it means to be on the cusp of adulthood, on the cusp of some big change in your life and just watching someone go through that with just the reality of, of nonfiction. This just, this is so true to life. It's so beautiful and heartbreaking. You just love Jason and you're just, you're just pulling for him and you have to go through what it's like being 13 while his parents are going through this like slow motion divorce. This is this book is poignant, it's really funny, it's profound, it's kind of weird, um, it's almost elegiac at some points. It's just, it's, if you've ever read David Mitchell, it's just, it's quintessential David Mitchell. I love it. 2017, my favorite book was A Working Theory of Love by Scott Hutchins. This is probably the most personal book to me on this list. The book is about a man who's been contracted to go through his father's diaries uh, and input them into a computer because this company is trying to create the first sentient computer personality ever. And this guy's father was famous for his really detailed long form diary. They have 10 years of just really, really detailed diary work. So he is basically contracted by this company to go and input the diary um, into this computer. And the computer will basically try to learn this man's personality and become this person essentially. But what's fascinating about it is that his father actually committed suicide and they had kind of a, a rocky relationship at times. So through this project, he's kind of piecing together who his father was and he weirdly starts to get to interact with him through this AI that's being built. So he's having conversations with this AI who's kind of becoming his father and it just gets so heartbreaking and gorgeous. Uh, and it just means so much to me because I've had a really long and tumultuous relationship with my own father and the idea of piecing together past bits of him and being able to actually converse with that version of him is, is so beautiful to me. Uh, it just means so much, but um, at, yeah, at one point he ends up finding kind of a long lost year section of the diary. Um, so it, it starts to kind of fill these gaps about like why his father killed himself, why their relationship was the way they were, who he was, what his, what their marriage was like. It's just, yeah, it's, it's fascinating. In 2018, the best book that I read was yet another book I think uh, most people have not read and it pisses me off at this point. Um, that's Twin Studies by Keith Millard. This is just an engrossing, beautiful novel uh, about the bond between twins. It's about sexuality, it's about gender fluidity. This taught me more about gender fluidity than any article. And the fact that this was written by like a 70 some year old man blows my mind um, and really speaks to the kind of life that Keith Millard has had to live through the 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s when some of these terms weren't used, when people didn't understand gender fluidity at all. Uh, this is like a work decades in the making for him. 
Um, and it's just, it's fantastic. I've seen this described as the great American novel written by a Canadian, and uh, that's probably the best way I can describe it. And last year, 2019, my favorite uh, book that I read was Gone with the Wind by Margaret Mitchell. Like I've said in past videos, I'm not gonna talk a ton about this because I have like a 25 minute video on my channel that you can watch if you wanna hear me blab and blab and blab on about how much I love this book. This is one of the easiest reads that I've ever had in my entire life. It's a thousand pages long and I read it twice in two months. It was just, I blew through this book both times. It's that entertaining. It's wonderful. So this is the point in the video where I tag people and for anyone that I'm tagging, I'm sorry. I understand that this kind of comes with a little bit of research, but it was really fun for me. Only do this if you think this will be fun for you because uh, it's a bit of work. So um, if you're up for it, great. If you're not, who cares? I'm gonna tag um, Eric Carl Anderson. I'm gonna tag Matthew Sharapa. I'm gonna tag Jessica from Jessica Reads Things. I'm gonna tag, um, you know what? I'll tag Jasmine from Jasmine Reads. I just did the big books tag, which she also did. So I'll pass it back to her. And I'll also tag, should probably do five, hey? Oh, I'll tag uh, Laurel Ann from Insert Book Pun here. And as a bonus tag, she hasn't made a video in like four months, but I'll tag Laura Fry just to see if this will get her back into the game because sometimes we need that. I know more than anybody. So there you go. If you want to do the tag and I haven't tagged you, be my guest, just let me know. 10 years, 10 books. It's a lot of fun. Get into it.